Greetings. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Sr., your host, and this is Community Forum. Ladies and gentlemen, we're honored to have with us uh, Michael Nearham. He's the Lake County State's Attorney, and he is a person that you should know. And with me is uh, co-host uh, Nina Stokes. Uh, uh, she's an expert at camera work, and we thought we would give her an opportunity uh, to be co-hosts uh, for future programs. And uh, we also like to thank uh, the contact person, Cynthia Vargas, also uh, a person that you should know. She's a communications manager uh, for the Lake County State's Attorney's Office. Uh, greetings, um, Mr. Nearham. Well, good evening. Uh, we'd like to, first of all, thank you for taking time from, from your very busy schedule to be with us on Community Forum. Uh, and I mentioned you're a person you should know, but now you're going to be known nationally. All right. Uh, community Forum airs uh, uh, in Kenosha, Wisconsin, on Time Warner, Channel 4. Uh, it also airs in Chicago, CNN. Also, of course, uh, Lake Forest, Libertyville, Highland Park, and so forth. Uh, so, first of all, we'd like for you to tell our listening audience a little bit about your personal and professional background. Sure. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on the show. Okay. I really appreciate it. Um, so I was born and raised in Waukegan and mm -hmm. uh, grew up uh, as part of a family business in Waukegan here and uh, always kind of had a bug to be in, in law enforcement in some regard. So I went to law school at John Marshall Law School in Chicago and commuted back and forth from Waukegan. And, um, during my time in actually college and in law school, I interned at the Lake County State's Attorney's Office. And mm -hmm. uh, because I was from Waukegan and their offices in Waukegan, and it was something that I could do to learn about the judicial system and law enforcement as I was going through college and law school. Mm -hmm. So I actually did five separate summer internships with the State's Attorney's wow. Office. And I've mm -hmm. done everything, you know, I've, I've filed files, I've answered <laughs> phones, I've worked with the investigators. Um, it's kind of nice because now that I, I run the state's attorney's office, every single job that there is in the office I've done personally. And it helps me kind of relate to the people that work in the office because there's 150 people that work in the state's attorney's wow. office. But we'll, we'll talk more about that I'm sure okay. later. But um, So going through law school, I, I continued to intern in the office. And then after law school, my first job was as an assistant state's attorney here in Lake County. And I worked there for several years and kind of worked my way up through the different divisions from you, you start out doing traffic cases and then you move up into DUIs and then misdemeanors and domestic violence and, and all the different divisions mm. and, and ended up trying uh, murder uh, and things like that and, and the very serious felony crimes. And after doing that, and, and I got to the point where I sort of felt like I had done everything there was to do in the office. And this was long before I ever... Uh, thought I'd run for this position as, as the state's attorney. Mm -hmm. um, so I got to the point where I wanted a new challenge and, and some different experience. So I left the state's attorney's office and I went into private practice in Waukegan and worked as a criminal defense attorney for a few years. And had I was a partner in a firm mm -hmm. in Waukegan where we did some civil work, but predominantly uh, criminal defense work. And I also had a contract with the court system uh, in Lake County where if there was a conflict with the public defender's office, I would be appointed to represent indigent clients um, on any range of cases from misdemeanors into felonies and also uh, post-conviction petitions where they were claiming um, some sort of violation during the trial process. I would represent them, uh, the indigent clients, for the public defender's office yeah. uh, in, the, in Lake County. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, uh, I saw that uh, the, my predecessor, Mike Waller, was going to retire, so I decided yeah. uh, at that point that you know I'd like to, to take a shot at running for this office because I've always known that there's a lot of ideas that I had that I thought could help help make the state's attorney's office what it should be, and uh, I took the opportunity after having a, a long conversation with my wife to make sure right. it was okay <laughs> with her because um, it's a long road. I mean, it wasn't an easy uh, election process. It's a big county. It's a, it's a big office, and it was a, it was a fight. I mean, it was a 15 month long hard uh, campaign, uh, had to win a primary first. I had two or three opponents initially in the primary mm -hmm. and then the general. And um, so it, it, was, it was a struggle, but, but it's good to be here now. And I certainly, all the people that ran for this office 
initially are all wonderful people and really well uh, intentioned and, and had their vision for the office as well. In fact, two of them work for me now. Yeah. And uh, one of them I promoted after winning the election. And because, he, you know, he's somebody that, that I know has a passion for what he does. And, and, you know, this job, you have to be a little bit political because it's an elected position, mm -hmm. but the job itself should not be at all political, and the office yeah. should not be at all political. So uh, once the election's over, we don't care about any of the politics and all that stuff, and we just work on, on pursuing justice. So uh, I'm married, I have a family, I live in Gurnee, and mm -hmm. I have three kids and a dog, and <laughs> I'm a very lucky guy, and uh, my parents and my extended family are all in the area. We all live in Lake County. We were all born and raised here. So we have a lot of roots mm -hmm. here in Lake County, which is important because it, you know, I look at my job as I, I represent the people of Lake County. I'm their attorney. And it's funny, whenever I, I talk to kids uh, in schools, I always say, hey, did you guys know you had a lawyer? It's me. <laughs> and and you know, little kindergartners are like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so, but I, that's how I look at my job, is my job is to represent the people of Lake County. Um, and, and I'm proud of what I do. I'm proud of my office and the people that work in the state's attorney's office. As I said earlier, there's 150 people in the office. It's the third biggest state's attorney's office in Illinois. Wow. So every wow. county has an elected state's attorney. So there's 102 counties in Illinois. And you know, growing up in Waukegan, I, I kind of thought the whole state was like Waukegan. I didn't realize <laughs> that most of Illinois was pretty rural and, and a lot of farm country. And a lot of the counties in Illinois are relatively small. And in fact, in some offices, it's the elected state's attorney for the county, and, and that's it for the whole county. Uh, maybe an assistant or a secretary, but that, that <laughs> they run the entire state's attorney's offices. But here in Lake County and some of the bigger counties, certainly Cook and, and DuPage and Kane and McHenry and Will and some of the bigger counties, uh, there's an elected state's attorney and then a staff of people that work in the office to help with the day-to-day -day operation. Uh, you mentioned about uh, Lake County in probably the third largest uh, office mm -hmm. in the state. About 750,000 people, 750 right. to 800,000 people right. in the county. Right. So that's a huge responsibility. It's there. a huge responsibility, and my job is to provide justice for okay. you know, almost 800,000 people. And that's a, that, that's a lot of weight on, on your shoulders, but it's mm -hmm. important. And, you know, one of the challenges, but I also think this is a, a really a neat thing about Lake County, is how incredibly diverse we are um, in really every different category. I mean, when you think about Lake County, we have everything. We have some of the most wealthy communities in the country. Mm -hmm. We unfortunately have some of the poorest communities in the country. We have areas that are kind of inner city type areas, urban areas. We have very rural uh, farm country areas mm -hmm. and everything in between. And when you look around the country, there's not a lot of counties that are like that. Some counties are almost all rural. Some counties are almost all urban. Uh, we have a little bit of everything here in Lake County. And we have police departments, for example, some of which have six police officers. Mm -hmm. We have departments with hundreds of officers and, and each and everywhere in between and, and varying levels of resources that they can bring uh, to bear, and and that's why it's important when when because our goal is to make sure that everybody's treated the same, and mm -hmm. that if a victim is a victim in one community, that that case is going to be handled the same as if that person was a victim in another community, uh, and the same with the defendants. So, it presents some unique challenges, but I think it mm -hmm. it just it it makes for a much richer experience. And um, it, you know, when you step back and you think about how unique Lake County is, it really is. I like it to really mention. Uh, some questions that I asked uh, maybe uh, other people in the county would like to know too. Kind of what uh, piqued your interest initially to get involved in a law profession? Well, uh, when I was younger, actually, I always wanted to be an FBI agent. Oh. And uh, as a little kid, and I, I guess I never really grew out of it because I just always was fascinated with that. And I always, you know, this desire to help people. Um, I, I was one of those people that growing up, I always hated bullies. Uh, and I'm, I'm a, you know, bigger than most people, and I was always big for my size or for my age when I was in class. And, and even though I was always one of the biggest kids in school, I always would stick up for the little guys because mm -hmm. I, always, I just hated bullies. I always have. And what's neat about my job is I get to go after bullies just oh, right. at a different level because a lot of criminals are, are just that. They're bullies. And, mm -hmm. and we get to stick up for those people and bring the power of of the government to bear on people that are bullies and mm -hmm. that's a lot of fun and it can be very rewarding so that 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 that's always been in my nature and I think that's what's driven me to this to this career 
You appear to be a very people person, too, because <clears throat> you involve not only just in the office, you're out in the field, you're uh, giving uh, lectures, uh, you, um, I saw you at a, at a basketball game. You, you, uh, basketball you like team, I, 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 you weren't a Magic Johnson. <laughs> no, you know, I'm not very good at basketball. But, but you, each year you're, uh, you're out there to raising funds for um, the organization and so forth, you know, so, and you enjoy. Doing I do, it. you know, I, I like, you know, I don't think you can or certainly should do this job if you don't like people, and mm -hmm. especially since you represent people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other thing, I think traditionally prosecutors sort of looked at their job a little differently than, than I, I do. Um, prosecutors traditionally were very reactive. In mm -hmm. other words, a crime would be committed, the police would in, get, respond, they would investigate the case. And prosecutors didn't really much care what happened until the investigation was over, the, pro the police brought the investigation to the prosecutors and then they took it from there and handled things in court and weren't really concerned about what happened before that or really after that, quite frankly. Um, it, and I look at our role much differently. I think it's our duty, it's our responsibility to get in front of crime, to try and to prevent crime in the first place, to educate the community, to work with kids, to help initiate new laws if we think they're appropriate, but, but to do more than just go to court and handle cases in court. We really need to get out in the community, represent people, and, and like I said, try to prevent crime from happening in the first place. Nan, aren't you fascinated by uh, state's attorney's uh, duties? Yes, it seems like he, you have your hands full. I do. <laughs> <laughs> and you have said you have a staff. Um, mm -hmm. what, do you, what are the particulars of your staff so our that staff, helps you out? Sure, and, and I'm, I'm very lucky I have a great staff and they they work very hard and um, you know it's it, these people they they don't get overtime they they work you know mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. it's seven o'clock at night and there's still people in my office working wow. and they're not getting they're just there because they care and they're mm -hmm. that dedicated and they're there on weekends and because mm -hmm. they know that their job is to seek justice mm -hmm. and to represent the people of Lake County and if you have a trial Monday for example well, you're going to spend Sunday in the office getting ready for it, and and that's part of your job because they're all professionals, and and it, it's I'm very lucky to have the type of crew that I have, but they're comprised of. Uh, you might be surprised; it's not all lawyers. So about half of the 150 people that work in my office are uh, attorneys. Uh, the other half are different types of support staff. So we have um, administrative assistants, we have paralegals. We have investigators, um, victim witness coordinators. Mm. We have a lot of victim witness coordinators in our office that are there to help victims kind of get through the court process because we know that, you know, if you're a victim of a crime and you come to court, uh, it's not a comfortable experience. It can mm -hmm. be a terrifying experience and it's a very foreign experience for most people. The language is different, it's not comfortable, it's not a happy place. So, you know, you may hear a term in court and you have a question, well, what does arraignment mean or, or what have you? And there are people in our office and it's their sole job is to help sort of walk the victims through the process and help get them through the difficulty of having to come to court and be part of the criminal justice process. And sometimes we're involved with these cases for long period of time, periods of time and when appropriate we can help refer them to treatment and things like that to help them, again, kind of get through this. Mm -hmm. So the victim coordinators do wonderful work. We also have investigators, as I said, and, and we have a team of investigators that uh, are very experienced law enforcement officers, and they do, um, they can conduct their own investigations. So if you have, for example, a police officer that is charged with a crime, uh, or we have some recent cases with probation officers that um, are alleged to have violated the law, and our investigators will go in and do those investigations because mm -hmm. you wouldn't necessarily have a police department investigating their own officer. So we can come in as a sort of a neutral agency and handle cases regarding uh, official corruption, official misconduct, uh, police officers and, and uh, people involved in the judicial system that are kind of going awry. Uh, and that's what they do. And the other work that they do is they can support the attorneys that are handling cases. So if you're mm -hmm. an attorney and you're getting ready to try a case that's, let's say it's up for trial Monday and you can't find one of your key witnesses, you, we have investigators that can go out and help find those people or if at the last minute somebody discovers, you know, hey, nobody took a picture of the, of the car or something and they can go do those things to help prepare the uh, attorneys. So they do very important work as well. We also have a complete 
uh, core of volunteers that come and they help mm -hmm. our office. And um, these are people that just like to be involved in what we do, and they help us out. And they do anything from listen to uh, overhear phone calls and try and decipher what's being said to simply, uh, if a victim's coming to court, you know, just have somebody that you can sit and have a cup of coffee with while you're waiting for court, you know, just somebody mm -hmm. to help kind of get you through the process. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of different types of staff in our office, and, and the attorneys uh, do both criminal and civil work. I was so. going to ask you about that, too. Mm -hmm. you, you have uh, 150 people working, and you gave us the structure mm -hmm. of the state's attorney's office in a large, or your civil and your sure. criminal division. You may, may want to break that right. down. Right. So, uh, and it's important for people to understand because I, you know, I know the title of this show is your state's attorney's office because it is. Okay. It's it's not my office. It's our office. It's this okay. this is about the people, and we represent the people. So, uh, we're structured. There's there's myself. I'm the elected state's attorney, and I'm responsible for everything that happens in the office mm -hmm. um, but I, but there's a lot of cases and I can't do them all myself so mm -hmm. I need help and uh, so we have we're broken up into a civil division and a criminal division okay. on the civil side you know there's a hierarchy so there's a supervisor of the civil division or the chief deputy of the civil division we have a child support enforcement division mm -hmm. which falls under civil um, yeah. we also have uh, several attorneys that work in the civil division that do any number of civil cases and, and we represent the county elected officials so if somebody sues the clerk for example my office would represent uh, the clerk in court uh, we also represent the county so you can think of us as sort of the civil law firm that represents Lake County mm -hmm. um, any issue with taxes zoning um, property enforcement things like that our office civil division handles those um, and that's a very important part of what we do and a part that a lot of people don't know we do. And I, you know, sometimes I, I kind of laugh because I think some people have no idea we have a civil division. Because when most people think of state's attorneys, they think of prosecutors right. yeah. and yeah. criminal yeah. law. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have the civil division and, and they do great work. They also do involuntary civil commitments on, on um, issues in terms of uh, mental health and things like that. So some very important work mm -hmm. they do. On the criminal side, uh, we have the office, when I came into office, I, I broke the office into different uh, subdivisions. It used to be where you would work your way into the felony, and then once you got into the felony unit, uh, you sort of, you did a little bit of everything. When I was a felony prosecutor, I had drug cases, uh, sexual assault cases, murder, white collar crime, cyber, you name it. I had all different types of crime. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, as the law has evolved, uh, it's become very specialized. And I think we're more effective at what we do when we specialize in how we handle cases because even when you look at human nature, I mean, certain types of people like to handle certain types of cases and some people don't. Some people love uh, accounting and they know numbers and they like boxes of files and, mm -hmm. and they love to do the white collar cases. Mm -hmm. Some people love computers and they like to do the cyber cases. Mm -hmm. um, one of the areas that we're very concerned about are cases involving either the sexual or physical abuse of children. And sadly, there's a lot of that in Lake County. Um, mm -hmm. And we have some neat initiatives that I can talk about with that. But, you know, when you think about being an attorney and you're talking to a young child that's been the victim of a, of a sex crime, for example, you know, what a horrible experience for that child. And it's very important to me that the attorneys that handle those cases can relate to the child and make that child feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And that really has nothing to do with where you went to law school or what your resume looks like or any of that stuff. Because you can be the, you know, the smartest lawyer in the world, but if you can't make a victim feel comfortable in those types of cases, then, then you're really, you're of no use there. So mm -hmm. what I did when I got elected is I re-interviewed every single person in the office, all 150 people. And it took me several months because I, I wanted those interviews to, they weren't quick. We spent some time. We went through, and, and I wanted to hear from them what where, where their strengths were, where their passions were, mm -hmm. what types of cases they were interested in. Mm -hmm. um, I also, it was important that they heard from me what my vision is of this office and what I expect of people. And through that process, I was able to kind of decipher who should go where. And I broke the office into, into a lot more specialized units. So we have, you know, again, we have a domestic violence unit. Mm -hmm. We have a traffic and misdemeanor unit. We have a, a felony review division, which is the division that uh, works with the police to 
answer questions 24 7. there's people on call so if the police have a uh, question at two in the morning or if they want authorization to charge a felony or a domestic violence case they call those cases in or if, the, or if a search warrant is needed um, so that's that's a tough division but we have a whole group of people working there we have our juvenile division and they handle all the juvenile prosecution we also have within the felony division we have a specialized victims unit which involves all the sex cases in lake county we have a um, cyber crime and a white collar division we have a gang and narcotics unit mm. and so on and so forth so each one of those units has a chief that oversees a number of people that work within that unit but these people are all highly trained yeah. uh, and they specialize in what they do but most importantly they're where they want to be and they're where their passions lie and it makes them I think infinitely more uh, effective at handling their cases but also working with victims because a lot of what we do uh, involves interacting with victims. Oh, uh, <coughs> State's Attorney uh, Nehem, in a country we have uh, a lot of problems all over the country, mm -hmm. the, the largest cities mainly, police relationship with the community. What are you doing in your office to ease the, if you have people that are compassionate and so right. forth, to so that <clears throat> we won't have a problem in Lake County like we have in other, other large cities. Right. You, you know, one of the things that we do, or one of my responsibilities is to investigate, or not investigate, to, to, but to make a determination when you have an officer involved shooting, for example. Mm -hmm. um, we had five in Lake County last year. Okay. Five. Now, a lot of people don't know that because, you know, we have uh, a reputation, uh, we in general as law enforcement, of having integrity and being very focused on making sure that the investigations are done properly, that mm -hmm. they're accurate um, and, and quick but not too quick because you know the people need to know what happened but we also have to make sure we're getting all the facts. Mm -hmm. But you, you know that's we have a lot of things going for us in Lake County but we have mm -hmm. a long way to go because mm -hmm. I know there are some communities uh, here in Lake County where there's a lot of distrust between the community and the police department in some of our towns and we we have to do a better job there because you know you look around the country and you look today what's going on and and what's happened uh, just in this past couple of years I mean it's really uh, you know, some of its some of the reaction is justified some of it is not um, but we I, I think the, the way you handle that is to mm -hmm. develop relationships and mm -hmm. to develop trust you know it's very important that the public trusts me and trusts my office. Now, I can't ask them to do that. I have to earn that. Mm -hmm. And trust is something that, that takes time, and you have to develop those relationships and, and show people that, you know, when we do something, this is what the process is, this is how we do it. And you may not like the answer, you may not agree with the answer, but you have to agree with and trust the process. And a lot of that is just education. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've police officer people that I know that have been police officers for over 30 years and they've told me that in their opinion the perception today uh, from the public a lot of people in the public and law enforcement is the worst that's ever been in their career mm -hmm. again going back 30 years and that's something that you know that has to change when I was a kid in Waukegan growing up when if a police car drove through my street you'd see 15 kids on bicycles chasing after that cop car because they used to give out baseball cards and, and we'd want to get a baseball card. Well, that was my, my frame of reference growing up as the police. It was always very positive. Mm -hmm. And I know today there's a lot of towns and a lot of areas where a cop car drives through the town and the kids run the other way because they're mm -hmm. scared of the police. Mm -hmm. And again, some of that's justified, some of it isn't, but um, you know, it's not just one side. I mean, I think the, there's a lot of blame on, the, on law enforcement. Uh, you know, I was looking at an article the other day on some Facebook posts that different police officers around the country have made uh, on their personal Facebook pages, which were just awful. And, and when you read that stuff and you wonder, well, no wonder people don't trust the police and no wonder that we have these, these perceptions out there. And, and look, there's bad apples in every bunch. We all know that. I think the vast majority of police <coughs> officers are really good, hardworking, honest, decent people that do a very difficult job. But you do have people out there that are bad apples that, that almost spoil it for everybody else. What about your relationship with the police association? So I try to keep uh, a, a very tight relationship both with community leaders and okay. with police associations mm -hmm. because 
you know, I don't, my job is not to take sides. My job is to seek justice, and whatever's right is right. And I'm very involved with the chiefs of police in Lake County. We all talk very frequently because there's a lot of issues that we work on globally, whether it's gangs or heroin or mm -hmm. uh, different ways to try to prevent crime. It's important that we all communicate, but it's not just law enforcement. It's the community as well. And one of the things I started in my office uh, on day one was what I call my Citizens Advisory Board, oh, okay. which is a group of community leaders that come in, uh, pastors, uh, you know, just people from the community that are trusted that I meet with monthly and we sit down and we just talk about issues in the community, issues like this. And, you know, we have very direct and frank conversations about how we can be more active in the community, how we can work to build that trust. It also gives people uh, a voice in my office that, that they might not have had before. I mean, I know that if somebody has a concern, for example, they may not call me or they may not call the police, mm -hmm. but they may talk to their pastor and their pastor can call me directly. And all those people uh, essentially have a direct seat at my table anytime. Uh, and that's been effective. But to go out there also and to try to build relationships with different community leaders yeah. is really important. Uh, and then to get out, and as you said earlier, I think it's important to have the forums. I've participated in a lot of forums uh, in Waukegan and in Zion and in areas uh, where, where we really need to build trust between the community and the police. And that's a two-way street. The police have to reach out and be willing to do it, and the public has to reach out too. And a lot of it uh, really boils down to just understanding and, and education. Um, one other program that we have that we just started is a Knowledge is Power program. Okay. And that's a program that I'm really proud of. And what that does is we bring in young people from uh, Waukegan, Zion, North Chicago. We bring them into our office, and they become part of our, our office for the day, so to speak. And they get to see who we are what we do, all the different roles in the office, kind of a job shadow sort of thing. And for some of those people, it's the first positive interaction they've ever had with law enforcement or the court system. But the, every one of them to a person leaves full of ideas and excitement and hope. It's my hope that we're motivating people or inspiring people. Maybe they want to be a judge or maybe they want to be a prosecutor or be state's attorney or be a defense attorney or be a paralegal or what have you. There's so many careers out there and hopefully by doing things like that we can inspire people uh, to do that and also let them know that you know, not everybody in law enforcement is bad. Not all prosecutors are bad. Not all police officers are bad. Um, and then there's education too with the police. You know, the police I think could, could learn how to uh, handle situations uh, sometimes a little differently. I think uh, there's a lot of effort now into teaching officers to uh, when you arrive on a scene to try to de-escalate a situation rather than escalate a situation. So, like I said, it's a two-way street, and, and I can't emphasize enough that my experience has been, um, because again, I've been a prosecutor, I've been a defense attorney, I've been on both sides of this. Um, my experience has been that the vast majority of people involved in the system, whether they're judges, prosecutors, defense attorneys, police officers, are good people, really good people uh, that really care. Um, but but you do have some bad apples out there, no doubt about it. We have situations in the country, as you know, that you very seldom hear of a police officer being prosecuted. Mm -hmm. I think one was in South Carolina. Was that the one he was charged? Mm -hmm. It was charged, but not uh, um, indicted. I don't know how far it's gone now. But that was one. But you very seldom. And the way things are happening now, is that a good good sign? Is that Police don't commit crimes. No, police police commit crimes. <laughs> Prosecutors commit crimes. Judges, plumbers, <clears throat> electricians, everybody. You know, there's 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 bad apples in every bunch, and, okay. and the key is to find those people. Okay. Um, you know, we have police officers right now in Lake County that are being prosecuted by my office for various things, um, okay. and I can't talk about those because they're pending cases. And my job is to make yeah, sure that people never hear that about everybody it, but, uh, gets a fair trial. Yeah, but yeah. but but they are. I mean, we have police officers right now that we've charged that we're prosecuting in our in, in okay. Lake County. Uh, like I said, we have probation officers that we've we've investigated, we've prosecuted. Okay. Um, so it does happen. The case in South Carolina is 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 you know, I don't know all the facts in that yeah, case, but yeah. what I do know that appears to be nothing, you know, nothing less than a cold blooded murder. And mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm I was glad to see that that officer was charged. Again, I, I don't know all the facts, but from what I've seen uh, it's it's pretty clear cut there. So, but that's you know he'll have his day in court, yeah, and, and yeah. I'm 
sort of laser focused on, on Lake County and, and my responsibility in Lake County. I do pay attention to certainly what's going around, on around the country like everybody does. But, but I really focus about Lake County because that's my responsibility. There is a <coughs> state's attorney's association too uh -huh. that you participate in. Right. <coughs> that you meet annually or quarterly sure. or something. Of. So we have a group, uh, again, there's 102 elected state's attorneys in Illinois and okay. uh, we meet uh, twice a year and, and um, okay. you know, we coordinate efforts whether, in fact, I have a meeting tomorrow with a group of mm -hmm. prosecutors uh, in Kane County. Yeah. Uh, I'm on a committee, a best practices committee that looks at ways to prevent wrongful convictions around the state. Mm -hmm. And we have a meeting tomorrow in Kane County where we're going to meet with the Cook County State's Attorney, the DuPage County, the Kane, all the area state's attorneys and talk about you know, some of the things that we're doing and some of the thoughts we have on how to prevent wrongful convictions and learn from each other and you know, try to work together mm -hmm. as a group because you know, I talked earlier about how, how Lake County is a diverse community. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the state of Illinois is a diverse state as well. I mean, there's yeah. state's attorneys down south that don't have anywhere near the type of resources that we have and, and different types of problems. But, you know, this is one of those jobs that it's really hard to relate to it or really understand it unless you've done it. So it's nice that we have relationships where if I have a question, I know there's nobody that can really comprehend what my question is unless they've they've been a state's attorney. Mm -hmm. So I can call the DuPage state's attorney and say, hey, okay. you know, what would you do in this scenario? Uh, and vice versa. So it's really, it's nice that we have those relationships and we work together. Because one of the things, you know, when you look around the country that I think we're fortunate to have here in, in Illinois is that type of communication and collaboration. A lot of the issues that we deal with uh, are regional. They're not just Lake County. So yeah. when you look at uh, heroin and the opioid epidemic, for example, that's the whole, well, really the whole country, but that's predominantly affecting this part of the country. So all of Illinois, certainly northern Illinois, mm -hmm. uh, in southern Wisconsin and in all those areas, we're all in the same boat and we're all dealing with the same issues. So we need to work together and because, mm -hmm. you know, those problems don't stop at the Lake County or the Cook County border, mm -hmm. you know. So, so we have to keep working together. But having, being part of those organizations is important because it allows us an opportunity to go to Springfield and to lobby for legislation that we as a group think is important, or even to go to Washington, D.C. and lobby for legislation or funding for uh, the Violence Against Women Act, for example, or crime victim uh, rights or things like that. It's important that we, we stay on top of those issues because it's, you know, these, these, again, these are regional issues that we deal with. You mentioned you've been on both sides of the house, the prosecuting and also public defender. What is your relationship with public defenders? Well, a great relationship with them. I, I've talked routinely with the uh, Lake County Public Defender. We're in a group together called the Executive Justice Council, mm -hmm. which sounds like, it sounds neat, it sounds like superheroes, yeah. but uh, none of us are. Uh, but essentially what it is, and again, it gets back to that collaborate, the collaboration where you have the chief judge, the Lake County Board, the sheriff, the state's attorney, the public defender, and the Lake County clerk that meet monthly and we talk about issues that, that overarch the entire criminal justice system so we can work together. And I'll give you an example of, of why that's effective for, for government. Um, there's counties where um, you know you have case management systems, computer systems that kind of help uh, you know manage all your files and things like that. Well there's a county in Illinois where the state's attorney, the sheriff, the clerk and the courts all went out and bought a case management system for their respective departments mm -hmm. and spent a lot of taxpayer money doing that. And then when they got all their own systems, they realized that none of them talked to each other. Mm -hmm. So it was really ineffective because what's, what good is a system for me if I can't talk to the courts right. and we can't get those files and things or, or the public defender's office. Right. So one of the projects we have in Lake County that the Executive Justice Council is working on is um, this case management, integrated case management system, which it's taking more time to, to implement it, but what's going to happen is we're going to not just go out and buy our own systems. We're going to all work together and come up with a system that works for everybody, yeah. and that will save, you know, hundreds if not hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars of taxpayer money, plus it's just a smart way to do it. But it's that collaboration that's, that's really critical. But, you know, I have a very profound respect for public defenders because I've done their job. Okay. And it frustrates me sometimes because people don't give public defenders the credit that they deserve. Sometimes you hear people say, you know, you'll say, well, do you have a lawyer? No, I don't have a lawyer. I have a public defender. 
Well, well public defenders are lawyers, and, mm -hmm. and actually, in my experience, some of the assistant public defenders are, you know, just as good or better than some of the private attorneys. So, you know, they, they work very hard. They're very dedicated. Uh, they're very passionate about what they do. And, you know, if somebody has the benefit of having a public defender represent them, they should be grateful and they should be respectful because they have, chances are they have a very good lawyer that's working very hard on their behalf. And some of the, the toughest sort of battles that we have in court are against the assistant public defenders because they're, you know, they care very much about what they're doing. Uh, but one of the neat things about our profession is, you know, it's about trying to do what's right. And, mm -hmm. you know, nobody takes, well, not, I shouldn't say nobody, but people try not to take things personally. And if a defense attorney has a job to do, I know that that's their job to do. And we respect that and we do our job and they do theirs. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's not uncommon where you can have a defense attorney and a public defender and a prosecutor that are all very close friends. Uh, I have friends that are prosecutors and defense attorneys that are married to each other. Um, so it's, wow. you know, it's important <laughs> that, that there's respect there and mutual respect. So we do have a good relationship with our public defender's office and, and we value the work that they do. And ironically, you know, you might think that prosecutors would want to have, um, you know, not so smart attorneys on the other side of our <laughs> cases. Uh, quite to the contrary. It, our job is actually a lot easier if we have qualified good attorneys working on the other side of our cases because our job is to seek justice you know our, it, and, and it's often uh, misunderstood uh, in our adversarial legal system is such that in civil cases for example you have the plaintiff's attorney and you have the defense attorney and they go to court and they they have their you know their battle so to speak in court mm -hmm. the plaintiff's attorney is really only interested in their client and the defense attorney is really only interested in their client and that's mm -hmm. where their duties lie we have a job that is unlike any other job in all of law, which I think makes makes it very special, and, and I'm proud of it. Mm -hmm. When we go to court, it's some people think it's the prosecutor representing the victim, versus the defendant, the defense attorney representing the defendant. That's not the case. When we go to court, we represent the people of Lake County. Yeah. Our job is to make sure everybody's treated fairly, including the defendant. Mm -hmm. So if we see something where the defendant isn't being treated fairly or their rights have been violated, mm -hmm. it's our job to speak up even if the defense attorney doesn't. And so, you know, when we go, and, and the other side of that coin is true as well. We certainly listen to victims and we take what they think should happen or want to happen in a case, we take that to heart um, and we get their input. But at the end of the day, the responsibility on what happens on a case is, is ours. We, ha we may have, for, a, for example, a situation where a victim you know, want somebody to go to prison for 20 years because they scratched their car. Mm. And we may say, well, we understand that, and I would be upset too if somebody scratched my car, but we have to do what's right, and we, you know, we think this person needs drug treatment or something, for example. Mm -hmm. So we don't represent the victim in that respect. Our job is to represent a bigger picture. It's more global and, and to seek justice. And I tell everybody that works in my office, and this is one of those things that we did when I had those face-to-face -face meetings is, you know, your job is to seek justice, not merely convictions. Uh, and in fact, wow. I took the liberty, and I guess one of the nice things I was able to do is I, I changed our entire seal, our office seal, mm -hmm. and I, I put on our seal, seek justice, mm -hmm. because that's our mission. Not to win cases, not to get convictions, not to send everybody to prison, it's to do what's right. And that changes in every case. In some cases, people need to go to prison. In some mm -hmm. cases, people need a second chance. And, and, and we have the authority to look at the facts and look at the law, use our discretion, and, and try and do what's right. But you know, I tell every one of my assistants, if I ask you what your win-loss record is, you better not be able to tell me because I don't want you keeping track. Because if you're keeping track, that means you're just going to, Kate to trial on the cases that you think you can win mm -hmm. or you're only worried about winning cases. Mm -hmm. You need to work hard and do the best you can. But again, do what's right. That's it. And if you dismiss a case, or you give somebody that is mandatory prison a reduction, mm -hmm. I'm gonna call you in my office and ask you why. And the only thing I need to hear is that you thought it was the right thing to do and you have a reason for it. And as long as that's the case, we're gonna be fine. Um, so it shouldn't ever be about convictions. Mm -hmm. uh, some people have a misperception of prosecutors that um, you know, we sort of put notches on our belt every time we get a conviction and we're all about having undefeated conviction rates and, and mm -hmm. that's not what we're about, certainly in Lake County. 
None of the uh, <clears throat> Mr. Nearham is uh, speaking about justice, but he does understand the importance of uh, cultural diversity too. Okay. So I, I want to uh, address the cultural diversity mm -hmm. and what what are you doing in your workplace to promote cultural sure. diversity? So, in fact, I just took a half-day seminar on cultural <laughs> diversity two days ago. Oh, okay. I, I had this was something the county put together and offered it, and I. I made several of my supervisors attend this class, but then I figured, well, I need to lead by example. So if I'm going to make them go, I'll go with them. And it actually was really neat. I learned a lot. But, you know, I think one of the challenges that we face is, and we see this in some police departments, uh, in some minority communities, there's, there's not a lot of people that seek careers in law enforcement. And, and there's a lot of reasons for that, but that's the reality. I mean, when I, mm -hmm. when I came into office, um, I had uh, a job opening in my, the first assistant state's attorney position. I had probably 300 resumes. Mm. Uh, of that, I picked the top 50 uh, resumes that I liked, and I set up a hiring committee of people from different backgrounds in my office, different areas, uh, because, you know, I know, and this is one of the things we actually talked about in this diversity class is, if you take five people and, and they critique a candidate, they're all going to critique that candidate differently. Different. Mm -hmm. So it's important, and they all bring their own biases and their own perspectives, and mm -hmm. so it's important to have a diverse group of people that interviews those, those candidates. Mm -hmm. So out of 50, I sent all those 50 resumes to my hiring committee. I said, you guys pick the top three, give them to me, I'll interview, and then I'll pick you know, who I like out of those three. Okay. Um, and out of 50, I had one African-American woman out of 50. Uh, the rest were white males. Now, I hired her, and she's, you know, she was a wonderful assistant state's attorney. She recently left. To, oh. to, she got a better job in Chicago making more money. Um, <laughs> of and, and I'm happy for her. But, she doesn't know the but, challenge you have, yeah. too. Right. So it, it's, but I think you know, there are things we can do to reach out, and we've, you know, we've hired, um, I think, all the hires I've made, if you look at them since I've been in office have been very diverse. I mean, we've hired across the board. It's important to me to hire the best candidates I can hire because this is a very important job. It's a job where you have a lot of discretion and a lot of authority. And the single greatest attribute that I have when I hire somebody that I look for, it's mm -hmm. not where you went to law school. I don't really care if you went to Harvard or John Marshall or anything. You're not biased between. about John Marshall. Though. I love John Marshall. <laughs> I, you know, I went there. But I, you know, I, I get people that have gone to University of Chicago. Okay. One of the best law schools in the yeah, country, yeah. Um, you know. So I, I, that's important, but it's not the end all. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. You know, what I need to know is I need to know that you're a good person and that I can trust you, mm -hmm. because there's over a hundred thousand cases a year that go through this office, okay. traffic cases, wow. misdemeanor, felony cases. <laughs> every single one of those cases is my name on it, yeah. and I'm responsible for every single one of those cases, whether I was personally involved or not, and I take that responsibility. But what that means is when I hire you to go to court, I need to be able to trust that you're going to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that we pick the right people, but um, you know, I think some of the ways you can improve diversity is to reach out is to advertise in, in minority uh, publications, for example, and to, to go to different law schools. I even, you know, I have attorneys, for example, I have African-American uh, attorney friends of mine that I say, hey, ask around, do you have any friends that are about to graduate law school that want a job? Let me know. Bring me candidates. I've had friends that have taken me up on that that have brought me candidates. So um, it's, it's, it's reaching out. You know, we can sit back and say, well, nobody applies. Mm -hmm. but. Well, that may or may not be true. It's also important that, yeah, what are you doing to go out and reach out and make people feel that it's okay to apply mm -hmm. and that, you, that they're welcome in your office. So we've done a lot to improve the diversity in my office, and we certainly have a long way to go. But it's important that when people look at who's representing them, because as I said earlier, we represent everybody in the county, that that, that reflects our diverse community, that my office is as diverse as our community. Um, and I think, you know, getting earlier on, you know, don't just wait to law school. Get into high school and grade school and start trying to cultivate those relationships, which is why our Knowledge is Power program is, is really important because if we can get some of those kids to want to grow up and be prosecutors, mm -hmm. so we, we need to go way, get way in front of the train here and get to these kids early. You know, when I, I said earlier how I wanted to be an FBI agent, 
I had won an F essay contest when I was in high school, and I was able to go down to Milwaukee, or I guess up to Milwaukee, <laughs> and uh, spend the day with the FBI. And I was just a high school kid, and they, they let me come in their office, and they actually took me out to lunch, and, mm. and I'll never forget that day. And now I'd always wanted to be an FBI agent just because I thought it was cool, like on, in mm -hmm. movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. But when I spent that day with those agents, it was a day. It was just one day that I'll never forget. And ever since then, I was laser focused that this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So I think if we can, we can it, it's all it takes. If you can bring mm -hmm. some young person in, and if they get that experience and they get that bug, they could be laser focused, and, and this is what they want to do. One of the programs that our uh, Citizens Advisory Board is going to sponsor is uh, there's a program, and we're working with yeah. the Exchange Club in North Chicago. Paula, this is Paula's idea, and it's a great mm -hmm. one. Okay. Where um, the Illinois State Police Academy has a, an internship where you can send a young person that's interested in becoming a police officer, and they get to go down. I think it's three weeks they get to spend down at the academy, mm -hmm. and I think it's 500 bucks for a kid to go down there. Mm -hmm. They're going to sponsor somebody to go down in our Citizens Advisory Board. We're going to kind of take up a collection in, in our office and raise some money and send as many people as we can down to that as well. Mm -hmm. Because it's all about, again, cultivating those relationships and inspiring people to seek those careers. Because uh, if, if, if you bring me good candidates, I'll hire them. And I have. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Uh, one I was, it's going to be my next question about <laughs> interns. Yeah. And uh, Paula, I guess we're on the same same wavelength on that. And uh, if you get involved in an internship program with somebody uh, historically uh, um, black colleges, you know, you have an opportunity. Now, um, I met a young man under Dennis Ryan's administration. I don't know who you remember Dennis Ryan or not. He was the uh, a state's attorney. Yeah, and a little bit before my time, but I, <laughs> I've heard the name. <laughs> right. I, he, uh, he reached out to me and said, Brooks, you're a community activist. I, I need some help. Uh, you, you, just exactly what you said. You find yeah. me one, you know, right. I hire him, you know. So I just happened to be at lunch in Chicago, and I met a young man named Lonnie Randolph, and I encouraged him to apply. Mm -hmm. He did apply, and Dennis Ryan did hire him, but he commuted all the way from East Chicago, Indiana. Wow. So after one year, he said, Brooks, he said, I, yeah. I, you know, I, you mean well, and and I I, I serve you, but I, I just cannot do it anymore. But do you know Lanny Randolph is the judge you now? Good for him. You know, I don't know, maybe something about Lake County that, that did it for him, but he's uh, went to uh, well, uh, he's a judge in East Chicago, Indiana. I would just say if anybody's watching this show, and uh, okay. call us up or come in, or if they're in, maybe they're a little bit curious. Mm -hmm. Come in and we'll show you around the office. We'll spend a couple hours giving you a tour, show you around the courthouse. Happy to do that. And we do that with young kids that are in grade school, up to high school, and into college. Um, but that, you know, cultivating those relationships is, is really critical and starting early. That's a great, great point you made about uh, getting that interest at the lower level, mm -hmm. even grade school and high school. But, um, you know, we, if they don't get that, then. Um, we may not get them. We we lose no. them. And I would say, just I, we, you, know, you, you reminded me of this when you talked about the person coming from, uh, you know, East, 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 East Chicago, Chicago, Indiana. Um, we have a residency <coughs> requirement. And one of the things I did change when I was elected is I instituted a residency <coughs> requirement uh, because you know you need to live in Lake County if you're going to represent the people of Lake okay. County. Okay. I don't care where you live and you can live on a farm or in the city or anything in between, but it's got to be Lake County <laughs> because it may sound silly, but it's, you know, you need to read the local paper, drink the local water, be involved in local community activities, and you really have to understand the community that you represent. So, you know, it doesn't really, you're not helping the people of Lake County if you come mm -hmm. here and you work and then you get on a train and you go to Chicago and forget about Lake County until the next day. It's, this is, this is a bigger job than just going to court. One thing you may want to elaborate on is that <clears throat> the final decision cases rest with the state's attorney. You have the final word and there's no appeal, right? You, you, make, the, you make the final decision uh, of what cases are to be reviewed and which cases are to be prosecuted. Right. You mentioned about you have a panel there right. to review cases, right. but other 
the ones that will be prosecuted, you make that determination? So I have two panels. I have a Citizens Advisory Board, which is uh, a group of non-lawyers. Okay. And, and again, their purpose is to give me a perspective uh, and, uh, and a voice both in the community and, and the community of voice in my office. Okay. Um, so that's that panel. The other panel I have is my uh, case review panel, mm -hmm. which is a group of uh, attorneys that are volunteers that are from mostly not even uh, Lake County. I mean, I have people that are attorneys from Chicago, DuPage, uh, people that are civil rights lawyers, civil attorneys, uh, retired judges, retired public defender, law school professors, um, you know, people that have nothing to do with my office that don't rely on me for a paycheck. Mm -hmm. And it's their role to review cases, uh, old cases, mm -hmm. where, there's a, where there's new evidence of actual innocence. Okay. Now, what you have to keep in mind, and, and our role as prosecutors is to seek justice, and that doesn't end when somebody's convicted. Mm -hmm. So if there's evidence after a conviction that shows that somebody's innocent, then we have to act. We have to, I don't want to say we have to, like it's a, like it's, it's, it's a, a burden. I mean, it's our responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's our job to make sure that justice is done all the way through the process. So coming into office, I knew that the issue of wrongful convictions was one that, that is, uh, you know, it's an issue in, Walk in Lake County and something that we have to deal with. And, mm -hmm. and, and that gets to, the public has to trust what we do, and that's our role as prosecutors. So I set up this committee um, to be a review. Now, the decision on what happens with those cases is mine. And the reason I say that is, the purpose of setting up that panel was never to deflect my responsibility. <coughs> In other words, I didn't set up this panel to shield myself from having to make tough decisions. Mm -hmm. Essentially, all my job is to do is to make tough decisions all day, every day. And I didn't set up this panel so I could say, oh, geez, you know, I'd love to do this for you, but my panel said yes, or my panel said no. The panel's there if there is actual evidence of new evidence of actual innocence. Um, we also have an in-house conviction integrity unit, which is a group of prosecutors in my office that are tasked uh, with doing that same mission but just in-house. So we have mm -hmm. both an in-house and an outside model. Some prosecutors' offices around the country have a uh, conviction integrity unit. Um, I think we're the only office in the country that has the case review panel, but <clears throat> it's important to me that we have, we have both because mm -hmm. you need fresh eyes on some of these cases mm -hmm. and you need a fresh perspective. But, but the responsibility is mine. And I, you know, I, I take that responsibility. I, I own it. Okay. Oh, I, I cannot end the program without giving you an opportunity <clears throat> to let Lake County know that it, besides the hard, challenging work that you're doing, you do have time for leisure time activities, right? <laughs> Sometimes, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I do. If yeah. you work that in your schedule. <laughs> you, you play golf or you... Uh... I'm not a golfer. Believe it or not, I'm a, I'm a lawyer, but I don't like golf. Okay. I, uh, <laughs> you know, I will play golf, but I, I got to tell you, I don't really like it. Um, I like to spend time with my kids. That's what I like to okay. do. When I, when, you know, the, the one thing that can be challenging with this job, and I'll just say I love my job. I think I have the best job there is. I love mm -hmm. it. And, um, but the one challenge can be I do... It takes me away from my family a lot. Yeah. And I've always been a family guy. I was never somebody that went to work and then went to a bar and hung out with my buddies and then went home. I always, I went to work and I went home. And, mm -hmm. and that's what I still do, it's just sometimes home is, it's a little later at night. Mm -hmm. But when I am home, I want to be with my family. So that's, mm -hmm. that's my leisure time activity is to spend time with my kids. And, and they're getting a little older now to where they're involved in all different kinds of sports and stuff. So that's almost a full-time job too, mm -hmm. going to all those different things. And at the top of the program, you mentioned about uh, <clears throat> your wife, so I know you get fully uh, family support. Then. I do, and you can't do this job without it. And she is a saint for putting up with me, for putting up with you know, things that you read and hear and see. And you know, look, this is a job where you make decisions and, and anybody that's in a leadership position is gonna take some, take some arrows. And I know that going into mm -hmm. it and that's, that's fine, and I, you know, I can handle that. But it's harder when it's when it's your spouse. And I know if, if it were if it were the shoe were on the other foot, mm -hmm. and people were saying things about her, it would be I would get angry and I would get frustrated. So I know it's hard on her. Plus, all the time that I'm gone, she has to pick up the slack. And and you know, she's sometimes I, I feel bad like she's a single mother, raising her kids <laughs> while I'm out doing all this kind of stuff. But she's awesome. I'm very lucky to have her. And and you have to have support from your family, which is why when I thought about running. The first person I talked to was my wife. Yeah. I, I, if she would have said no, I, 
I wouldn't be sitting here right now. Or right. maybe we'd be talking about something else. <laughs> as soon as you got in the office, <clears throat> the county was reading the papers about all the accolades that you have received. So you received many accolades uh, of the work that you've been doing. You know, I'm, I'm lucky. I, I have a great team. I was really, I got state's attorney of the year last yeah. year out of 102 state's attorneys. And, well, you know, I, I, I don't bring that up to pat myself on the bat. I talk about my office because, okay. you know, I'm, I'm part of a big team and I get a lot of people that work really hard and they're the ones that are in the trenches every day going to court, handling the cases, uh, and, and, you know, they deserve the accolades, not me. I'm just. I'm just kind of steering the ship. <laughs> you're two years into your term. You're about halfway to uh -huh. your term, right? Where would you like to see the state's attorney's office in when your term ends in two years and the years following it? Well, I certainly, you know, I am going to run for re-election, so I, I hope to be re-elected, and, and that's going to be up to the people. But um, I, I hope to be in the office. I hope to continue the gains that, that we've made. I think we've come a long way in a couple of years, and we have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. in developing the trust from the community. Some of the programs that we've initiated to help with uh, heroin, for example. Okay. I'm really proud of some of the initiatives that we've developed with regard to getting police officers equipped with naloxone. For This is just one example of one of those programs which uh, gives them the antidote if somebody's having an overdose. Mm -hmm. uh, we're one of a few counties in the country that do this. Wow. And mm -hmm. since Christmas, so just in a few months, Lake County Police have saved 10 lives in Lake County. Well, that's so there's 10 young people that are alive today that wouldn't be if it weren't for that program. So there's a lot of programs like that that we want to continue. That's mm -hmm. good to hear. Well, thank you, uh, yes. uh, uh, Dr. Brooks. I've Nina. learned a lot here today. I didn't have much to say, but well, I've learned a lot. Are we done already? You've got oh, been yeah. challenging, oh, challenging yes. for you here. Yes. Um, Mr. Nerham, we, we're happy that, again, that you're taking time for your busy schedule to be with us. <clears throat> uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're, again, we've been talking with uh, Lake County State's Attorney Michael Nerham. Um, this program would not have been possible without uh, uh, Cynthia Vargas, uh, his communications manager, who's an outstanding person in the Lake County State's Attorney's Office. And you can see now why I mentioned he is a person that you should know. This has been Community Forum. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Sr., your host.